the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we gather in your house and in your name to offer this act of worship. We pray that your Holy Spirit would visit us to purify our hearts and consciences by that visitation. May we take our part in this service with much reverence, indeed much devotion to your honor for the glory and honor of your name. This is our prayer to Jesus Christ, our Lord. From the provincial hymnal number 392, 392, can also be found in the Mission Praise 756. 392 Provincial Hymnal, Mission Praise 756. continues on page 98 of the prayer book. We welcome all of you to this act of worship on this day where we observe the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. We thank God for his many blessings upon us, bringing us through the past week, sustaining, strengthening, and guiding. 
we have achieved. We have succeeded in various endeavors. We've also fallen short of the mark. We have sinned, we have transgressed against ourselves, against each other, and against Almighty God. Let us come to him who is the source of all that is, our beginning and our end. And we ask for forgiveness and pardon as we offer thanks and praise. And pray that this worship which we offer may redound as a blessing upon us to strengthen, to nourish, to comfort and lead us on as we seek to walk with Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And so on page 98, the sentence for the Epiphany. God chose to make known how great among the nations are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. On page 101 and following. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Our prayer of intent together. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. The Colic for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The fourth Sunday after the Epiphany is our colleague for today, page 161. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Ministry of the Word. The illumination for the first lesson. Moses assures the people 
that after his death, God will raise up another prophet to lead them. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Moses summoned all Israel and said to him, to them, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you have requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when he said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you among their own people. I will put my, my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words of the prophet that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold them accountable. But if any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. This is the word of God. Thanks to God. The psalm appointed is Psalm 111, Psalm 111, page 619 and following, page 619 and following Psalm 111. to his people he commanded his covenant forever holy and awesome is his name the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom those who act accordingly have a good understanding his grace and trust forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning is now and what shall be forever Amen Paul warns believers against becoming vain about their knowledge he declares that all they really need to know is that they are loved by God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 13. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound conscious when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Peter Dodd, from the Mission Praise, the gradual hymn number 226. Mission Praise, the gradual hymn 226, Healing God Almighty Father. Reconciling, learn to mm -hmm, 
God's at one man dying for us in his great redemptive plan. Jesus, Savior, feel a victor, join our for us dead sting. Lord, we bow our hearts in worship and united praises bring. Healing cry, red Christ anointing, raising to new life in Him. Help the poor release to captives, cure of body wells within. Life renewing and them power in Christ's life, service to the lost. Lord, renew, renew your wonders With you. And also with you, the continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, the first chapter, beginning to read at the 21st verse. Glory, Christ, Christ our Savior. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him at once. His fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. My friends, the Gospel of Christ. From the Mission Praise number 502. 502.
descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your land. Oh, come and sing the song with gladness as your hearts are filled with joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name. Oh, give him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain. And you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you not only for this opportunity to share and offer this act of worship, but to be able to meditate and reflect on your holy word. Pray that even now your spirit would speak to our hearts, to our lives, to renew, to refresh, to strengthen, where it is that we are trusting in ourselves the things around us and the world. We pray that the love and refining fire in your word may draw us back to that place where we can affirm you as Lord and Savior of our lives. Give grace that as your servant I may speak in your name. You who are God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, together we say amen. Please be seated. Words from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, and very especially verse 22. And he taught them as one having authority. He taught them as one having authority. In our Old Testament lesson, Moses is not going into the promised land. Verse 18 and onwards, Moses began, begins to make a concession speech. He, of course, is seen as the great lawgiver. The first five books of the Bible, the Old Testament, are seen as the first or the books of Moses. Of course, in another two weeks, we will not be able to share in it because we'll be having harvest. But on the last Sunday before Lent, the last Sunday after the Epiphany, we have the transfiguration experience. And Moses and Isaiah and Jesus are on the mountain. At the end of the day, Isaiah and Moses will fade. Hint, hint, Jesus stands alone. Because eventually, the law, as was handed down, it fades. Eventually, the great prophecy of Isaiah and the other prophets, they fade. But Jesus Christ, as King of kings and Lord of lords, he never fades. He is eternal. He is Alpha and Omega. So Moses now 
figuring that his end has come because he had transgressed. He had fallen short of the mark, the standard that God had set for him as a prophet and as a leader for the people. So Moses begins to make a concession speech saying that God will raise up for you a prophet. You're going into a new land, a promised land. You're standing on the threshold. And as you go into the land, you will be God's people and he will raise a prophet for you. Now, there are some persons who felt that Moses was speaking of Joshua. Because Joshua succeeded Moses. There are others who also felt that at the end of the day, it may have been one of the other prophets. But the reality is that Moses was pointing towards Jesus Christ. The ultimate prophet. Prophet, priest, and king par excellence. And Moses lets it be known that this prophet, this one who will be raised, will speak in no other name than the name of Almighty God. And Moses knew this all too well. Because Moses had spoken in his name. And that is why he was not going into the promised land. When God said to Moses to strike the rock and the water will come out, you know what Moses said? I am going to strike the rock. I'm going to make water come. The water is not about you, Moses. The water is about God. So Moses now puts himself in the place of God. It is what Paul warns us against in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. He lets us know that when we puff ourselves up with knowledge and thinking that it is about us, it never is. And so the Christian is reminded and must be reminded at all times that he or she speaks and stands in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Almighty God. In the power of God's Holy Spirit. And the challenge therefore now for us to recognize this authority. The people in the temple are hearing Jesus. He comes, he teaches, he speaks. And from their understanding, from what they're hearing, from what they're seeing, he is not like the others. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious leaders who somehow spoke with hesitation and it was always about them. Now, as I thought about the passage, it brought me to the present reality of Christendom. In a number of areas of Christendom, Christianity today, what we have is that Christians and I'm going to say preachers, pastors, evangelists and apostles, we like to talk about ourselves. You you watch the televangelists. You listen to them, you analyze and you realize that a lot of times it is about themselves. Even we, friends, we do it at times with our worship. You know how? When we come to worship, and we are worshiping Brother Franklin, is that we get to the point where, have I received anything from worship today? I, I didn't like the sermon. I didn't like the hymn. Things didn't go so well. And we find fault. Because somehow the worship has become about us. The focus is on us. And that is reminiscent of the scribes and the Pharisees. Because it was always about them. That they proclaim what it is that they are doing. How it is that they are living. And their righteousness as it were. But we're challenged today, and the calling for today reminds us that we must proclaim Jesus Christ who governs and holds all things in life. Because I want to suggest to us that our life is not about us, but it is about Jesus Christ. It is about God manifested in Christ that we live and we walk with and for him each and every day. And so this morning I want to lead us to a place where each of us now are called to be a prophetic voice or a witness for Almighty God. One of the challenges we face as a society, probably as a world, as a region, 
is that Christians are no longer speaking in God's name. The cacophony of voices, all that you're hearing around the place, there is confusion because each pastor, each priest, each minister, not all of them, but a greater majority of them are seeking to push their own agendas. They're seeking to push their own way. And suddenly, everybody knows how to interpret scripture. Scripture is no longer interpreted by the power of God's spirit guiding, directing. It is what I feel. It is what I think is best for my congregation. And then in some places, some of us as preachers, we don't want to offend. We want everybody to love us. Don't we? As humans, we want to be loved. I want to be loved. Not for who you think I am, but who you want me to be. Good loving for me. Real love with no strings attached. I see Humphrey nodding. I don't know how Humphrey nods these songs, really. <laughs> and I know you ain't singing these to Ingrid, so I want to know how you know these songs. <laughs> nodding away and trying to mouth the words. As humans, we want to be loved. Just yesterday, I, I, I stopped having a funeral, I stopped. Island Harbor, there's a gentleman there. I think y'all know Tank. <laughs> Humphrey knows Tank very well. And Tank, I love you. Everybody loves you. I say, no, Tank, I'm scared when everybody loves me. <laughs> because Jesus himself reminds us, be careful when all people speak well of you. Be careful. Because it is not only that it is untruth that everybody will love you, but also, it could swell the head. It could rise up as ego. When we figure, they, they love me, they love me, they love me, they love me. And so sometimes now, we couch our witness and we couch speaking God's word in language that somehow will not offend. It will not create any challenge. It will not create any difficulty for anybody's hearing. And the truth of God's word is that sometimes it makes the comfortable uncomfortable and the uncomfortable comfortable. It comes into our experiences and it pricks our conscience and it turns us inside out and draws us into that place where we recognize that in the presence of God we are nothing but mortals but at the same time he will get from us the praise, honor and glory which are due to his holy name. And you and I are called now to stand, not only in church, but in the marketplace around us and let others know who Jesus really is. In the midst of our brokenness, our hurts, our pains, in the midst of even our shortcomings. And I want to stick at shortcomings for a few moments. You know why? Because a lot of persons tend to think that when you say you're Christian, you become the most perfect person in the world. They want the world to believe that I am perfect and I am holy. That is why, friends, that your family members, my friends, and your friends who sometimes leave this church and other such churches, when they go elsewhere, they will suddenly say to you, I have found the Lord. I am saved. I am sanctified. I am covered under the blood. There is no other blood that you and I can be covered that we have the blessed sacrament of the altar. Every Sunday that we gather for worship, one more blood you want. But suddenly you want to be baptized over because there's a sense now that prevails, that suggests to us that the people who come here are not Christians. We're not holy, we're not righteous, and we need saving. Notice where the narrative has shifted from. It has shifted from glorifying and praising God in Jesus Christ to myself, who I am, what I have done, and where I am now. The reality is that we are all sinners being saved by grace. I want us to understand that. We are all sinners being saved by grace. 
So when we stand in the world, we're not letting it be known, we're not letting it be known that it's about us. It never is. It is about Jesus Christ and what he has done. And even when we figure that we are the worst sinner or the worst person in the world, hear what Paul says to us, that where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. St. John Chrysostom, one drop of God's blood is able to wash away the sins of the entire world. One drop. So you and I in the midst of our nothingness and our brokenness, we proclaim to a world, not ourselves, but Jesus Christ. And let it be known that it is because of his grace. It is because of his love. It is because of his compassion, his mercy. Why we are able to speak about him. Because this Christ we serve is a Christ who really draws us in spite of unworthiness. And the Pharisees and Sadducees who are self-righteous people could not understand that. The church at Corinth, Paul had to warn them because they were young church. He said, do not be puffed up in your self-righteousness. Do not be puffed up in your supposed knowledge of God. Because friends, I'm going to say to you, even as a priest of the church, I'm still learning about God. This diocese paid for four years for me to go and live in Barbados and to learn Greek, a little Hebrew, fiddle with Latin, and take on courses in theology, Old Testament and New Testament, and salvation history and counseling. And I don't have the foggiest about what God's plans are. I don't. I cannot. Because God is much bigger than the soapbox or the box of my theological training. God is much bigger than the box that we seek to put him in. God is Alpha and Omega. And so the challenge for the framers of the lectionary placing before us is to ensure that we can understand that we speak with prophetic voices. Thus says the Lord, we challenge injustice, we challenge immorality, we challenge unrighteousness. And all that does not speak well of the kingdom of God which you and I are called to advance. You notice my words. Sanjay, notice. The kingdom of God that you and I are called to advance. Not, not my kingdom. Not my kingdom. Brooksy has been here for 20 something years. Not his kingdom. Before that, Father Cooper. Not his kingdom. And Father Menace. And Father Lake in between there. Not their kingdom. And that is why even within our worship, we must be at that point where our focus is on God. Can't help but resurrect that beautiful hymn from the mission praise. We have come into this house, but the verse that says, So forget about yourself, concentrate on him and do what? Worship him. He becomes the focus, the central figure, the fulcrum of who we are. But in the midst of it, because of how we are built, because of how we are made, we always want to push self, we want to arrogate a place of status and, and righteousness and better than. And that is why I always love to go back to Isaiah chapter 65. It says to us that our righteousness is as nothing but filthy rags. Even when we feel as if we're at the top of the heap in our righteousness, when we look at it or God looks at it, it is as nothing but filthy rags. So Christ now comes and he speaks with authority, says to us that I am the end all and be all. And I love how Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 
Paul says, all I want to know is Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. All I want to know is Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. I don't want to know anything else. Because the same Paul, in Romans 7, you know what he said? The things that I should do, I do not do. And the things that I should not do, that I do. Oh, wretched man. He didn't say, oh, sinful man, you know. You you know what it means to be wretched? When you're considered wretched, in fact, a colleague, priest of mine, if you heard him tell the story, God rest his soul. When he came to the song, Amazing Grace, thank you for the article, Keith. When he came to the song, Amazing Grace, that save a wretch like me, he never sang the word wretch because he was bold enough to say, he's not any wretch. That were, that were his words? I kid you not. So I would know that he didn't sing those words and he says, I'm not a wretch. Because the understanding of wretch, when we think of, oh, Mrs. Books, help me away, call it etymology or something like that in language. Etymology of the word. You get to the root of the word. It means that you're good for nothing, outcast, the worst of the Lord. That's what wretched means. But Paul was able now to pull that to himself. To describe himself because Paul knew all that he had done. Not only his actions, but his thoughts. But Paul forsook all of those. In fact, he pushed him aside and he said, listen here, in spite of all these things, I just want to proclaim Jesus Christ. You know why? Because his love to me is unending. He will always love me. And that is why I'm always making the phrase, the point to us, that the only person who cannot be saved is the person who does not want to be saved. Christ's love is for everyone. He reaches beyond our brokenness. Him writer says, I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the place where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that brought me through. He saw my needs. Broken hearts and ruined lives are why he died on Calvary. And we need now to, as it were, accept that into our hearts and our lives. And when we go out into the world, we can stand and say, this is Jesus Christ because it's not about us. It's not about us. It is about Christ. Because his love, his salvation, his mercy, his grace are much more than my poor heart can handle. It is much more than my soul can feast upon. Because you know what? His love is not just for me. And Shireen gets it. Jean gets it. Paulita gets it. Donna gets it. Kishmel gets it. M. Sanja Gomes gets it. Marjorie Richardson gets it. And you know what happens? If we had to apportion that love and that grace, <laughs> Ooh, glory! What if we had to apportion that love and that grace? Okay, maybe not in those names I call. But because of your thinking and my thinking, some people would never get that grace. Can I get an amen? Yes, you know that. You would never give them that grace because they are not deserving of it. Not them. Them too wicked. Who, them? No, sir. You, you know what she did me? You know what he did? No, sir. You know how he treat my friend? He ain't do me anything, you know. But he treat my friend and I pick up um, cudgel. We call it cudgel in Antigua. I don't know what I call it. When you pick up for somebody, what do you call it? Nobody, you don't have a name for it, Anguilla? You pick up for somebody. You pick up for somebody. Okay, all right. And that's what happened. We call it cudgel. You're picking up cudgel for somebody else. The person didn't do you anything. You don't know anything about the person. But you decide because it's your friend. You don't even ask your friend if they're wrong or right. 
you're going to jump in and you're going to see that person and you're going to dislike the person world without end. See some people smiling because you know what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, if the grace is for us to give, we will not give it. But God in his manifold wisdom, love and compassion, he looks down and he says, look there. My son Kevin, I'm going to give him grace for another day. My sister Kamala, I'm giving her grace for another day. My brother, my child, Ivor, I'm giving him grace for another day. And we can't understand how it is that God works like that. We can understand if we realize that the narrative must shift from us to Almighty God. And he gives us now this prophecy, this prophetic voice to let others know because this is what the epiphany is about. It's about now going into the world and letting others know that in spite of your brokenness, in spite of your hurt and your pain, in spite of all that your experiences, God in Jesus Christ offers hope amidst the brokenness and the fragments of your life. He comes and he's calling and he's joying. And so the prophetic witness comes through us. So when Moses spoke, Moses spoke about Christ. But I want to move from Christ and to ask us to consider what kind of prophet can I be for Almighty God? How can I bear witness to his name? How can I speak to others? Especially those who are broken and those who are on the fringes. Those who somehow don't believe that this place, the church, is for them. And people can say whatever they want about the church. The church has its shortcomings. It has its challenges. Why? Because they're frail, hurting people. They're people who are sometimes greedy in the world and sometimes they bring that mindset into the church the church has a sordid past in some areas it is not perfect but it is still the visible presence of Jesus Christ on the earth it has made mistakes mistakes will be made and that is why we have to make sure that when we approach others with the witness of Christ we go with what I believe are the two most important words. Love and grace. Love and grace. The love speaks to the fact that God loves us and cares for us all. The grace speaks to that he reaches to every single person no matter what we are or who we are. Some people have reinterpreted grace for justice. I'm not going to get into a theological debate this morning. But when we understand how God's grace operates, we realize that me, you, as wretched, Christ continues to love us. He continues to call us. And he simply as the potter jumping back to the days of pottery he has us spinning on the wheel of life and as we go through very nicely he's there seeking to pull away those little things the little lumps the little impurities the little things in our lives which do not lend to building that spiritual character and witness that speaks effectively and efficaciously to the presence of Christ. Those are the things that we have inside our hearts that we don't want to let go. He's willing to pull and to remove. He's there plucking away. But sometimes we get so caught up in self, which is what this morning the Pharisees and Sadducees were about. They were about themselves, about what they can do. The people realized, no, there is someone here who speaks so much more of love and compassion and mercy. This is authority. 
And my friends, it is in that name that you and I speak. And so as we go through this week, as we encounter another week of working, of interacting, of sharing, we must ask ourselves, what kind of prophet can I be for Jesus Christ? Am I going to not say anything because the world is looking for a squeaky clean person? Am I just going to stay in my corner because uh, my past comes against me? I did something wrong so many years ago and I can't speak now because it is still like the sword of Damocles over my head. So let me just hush my mouth because the first thing they're going to say is, remember when you were so-and-so? Yes, remember when you were so-and-so. But also remember the grace of Jesus Christ. Remember his love and compassion. Remember his grace that has pulled us out of the darkness and doubt of our sin and given us new life in him. We're coming out of a week of saints. St. Paul is chief amongst them. St. John Chrysostom yesterday. Timothy and Titus on Friday. You know the funny thing about it, friends. We had others earlier, but I want to zone in on St. Paul. And I'm glad of the passage that he places before us this morning. That he who was a scholar in his own right, knowledgeable, top of the class, first class honors, name emblazoned on the Jewish mural as top of the class, St. Paul realized that all those things, he count them as loss for the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ. Those things don't matter. Those things don't equate for anything. They're things of the past. You know what matters? Is my life in Jesus Christ and what he means to me. And that's why he could now say, all I want to know is Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. I count everything, according to Galatians, I count everything as loss for the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, you and I, we have that responsibility to go into God's world and to be the voice of Christ. A prophetic voice that lets the world know that he governs and holds all things. And in spite of your unworthiness and my unworthiness, we proclaim not ourselves, but we proclaim Christ crucified. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing a cappella 561. 561 from the provincial hymnal. 561. We believe in God, the Father, God Almighty, by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to be in all created things began. We believe in Christ, our Savior, Son of God, in human frame, virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. Christ, who on the cross forsaken like a lamb to slaughter led suffered on the Pontius Pilate he descended 
to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's King to rule and reign. To the Father, Son, ascend till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit in one church below above. Saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Savior, Lord and friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. Invite us to sit or kneel. We invite our leader to come forward to lead us in the prayers of the faithful as we pray this morning and we are led in our various pleadings we remember to bring before almighty god those things which are not mentioned but those things which weigh heavily upon us as we offer the prayers of the faithful lord in your mercy after each petition please say reverently lord graciously hear our prayer lord, lord graciously, graciously hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer let us pray Everlasting God, thank you for welcoming us in love. Hear us as we pray for the good of the church, the world, and for all in need. Lord, graciously hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. Faithful God, we thank you for our church leaders and for all who preach your word, inspire, lead, and grow us as dis disciples. Also, we thank you for all who help us in our efforts to reach those in need in our communities and in our world. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. God of every land and nation, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus Christ. We pray for our troubled world, its peoples and their leaders. We pray for those caught up in war, violence and hatred, especially the innocent victims of these evils. May peace abound and righteousness flourish so that we may vanquish injustice and wrong. Lord, graciously, graciously hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, although we are sometimes separated by language and culture from the people we live amongst, we long to see your will done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for our neighbors, not only with words, but day to day, moment by moment, and in things we do and the way we do them. Lord, graciously, graciously hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abundant God, for those of us that desire and need your restoration and healing, as we remember the way your son Jesus Christ cast out demons, Today, we remember all those who live in the depths of depression and mental illness. Today, we ask for your blessing and healing. Touch upon them and their caregivers. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love. May those who have gone before us rest in your eternal peace. We remember before you those who have died, and we pray for those whose life is saddened by the death of a loved one. Be with them in their loneliness and grief. 
Lord, graciously hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for ourselves as we go from your house today to start the week ahead. We ask that in all we do, we may walk closely with you, safe in the knowledge that your fatherly love knows no bounds. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for, for the sake of, of your Son, our, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. A few moments as we reflect on the intercessions, the prayers of the faithful. As early indicated, those petitions which are spoken to us and those which have not been raised, we bring them before Almighty God at this time. Let us remember him as the great physician, the healing and anointing God. who restores all things in himself. Lord, in your mercy, invite us to turn to page 123, page 123. There begins the act of penitence. Blessed St. John, writing his first epistle, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 reminds us once again that if we should say we have no sin, then we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful. He is just. He will forgive our sins and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. the top of page 124. Prayer be of the confessional. It, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We stand for the greeting of the peace, form C, middle of page 125. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you.
emotions. Martin Plus Squared. Thank you, gentlemen, for that rendition. Good morning. Uh, visitors, do we have any with us this morning? Please stand. Visitors. Father Constant, you have to stand up, you know. I mean, yesterday was just the end of, you know. Uh, Kevin, is there anyone? Okay. Now, we have two persons. Um, most, uh, if not all of us, are aware that... Um, Vera uh, Antoinette, I'm sorry, Vera Antoinette, um, Scylla, she passed, her funeral was yesterday, and she had a couple of persons who flew in yesterday, well, not yesterday, in the week, to share with members of the family. And Father, if you permit me, I'm going to go lady first. The young lady you see standing beside Mrs. Brooks, I'm sure you would have heard of the Reverend Dr. Canon Professor Cartwright Davis. Uh, Anglican, a priest, scholar, international scholar, and so many other things. And I'm going to boast a little. He's from Antigua. Uh, but I, I, I leave that out. I leave that out. Um, the young lady you see standing there is Andy Davis, his daughter. Now, Dr. Davis could not be with us, and she is ably representing the family. So, could we give her a warm St. Mary's welcome? Good to have you. And we remember her. She's from the Church of the Holy Comforter. You're still in Washington? Uh, between Washington and New York. Between Washington and, and, New York. and New York. Okay, so she's multi-state between Washington and New York. And the priest now, uh, Father Joseph Constant, he's a parish priest over at St. John's in Belleville. Let me make sure I get it. Belleville in uh, Maryland. And um, he's here. He's a good friend of um, Scylla. And yesterday he made a presentation, and I listened to him. Um, in as much as he is thousands of miles away in Washington, he and Scylla spoke every week. And he came in to share with the family, um, very good friends to Verna and Velma, and sometimes Ethlyn. Um, <laughs> Yes, but um, Father, good to, to have you with us. Father's able to share um, in the service yesterday, and we thank him for making the, the trek um, to share in the service. So could we give him a, a warm welcome? <laughs> now, we are in the business of praying, and uh, we remember Andy, uh, because she lost her mom just in, is it August last year? In April last year, and I think they would have celebrated 50 years of marriage this year. 57 years of marriage. And then Father now, um, I was putting a little pressure on him to, um, to preach today. Because, you, know, um, uh, you know, every little vocation for the priest is a good vocation. And some of us, we do need it. And, um, you know, he couldn't because he also lost uh, a faithful parishioner. And so, Father, we're praying for you and your parish. Andy, we continue to hold you and the family in our prayers. Thank you for coming and sharing. Uh, those are our courtesies. I don't see anyone else. Uh, welcome to one and all. And it's good to have us in spite of the power out outage. And um, remember, I said it um, in the... Somewhere I said it. There's no fashion police and, and there are no other police here. So just come as you are, 
and let us worship God. And we're thankful for those who made it out in spite of the circumstances. Uh, by way of our notices, on Tuesday, we have Mass with Hymns at St. Andrews, 7.15 uh, p.m. Then on Thursday, the 1st of February, uh, 6 a.m., we have Matins and Mass at St. Augustine's. And then we have Home Communion in Pond Ground and Mount Fortune. Members of the choir, you're practicing at 6 p.m. on Thursday. Friday uh, is the 2nd of February. It is the Feast of the Presentation. We'll be here at the High Altar as we remember the presentation of Jesus Christ in the temple, the purification of Blessed Virgin Mary and Joseph. That is, we'll be here at 6.15 a.m., and then we'll have communion in the Farrington. Uh, next Sunday, the 4th of February, it is the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany, we'll be having Mass with hymns at 6.15 a.m., and then Song Mass and Sunday School at 8.15 a.m. Um, our harvest is just another two weeks away. That is on the 11th. So we need to make sure that we get ourselves organized what our donations and our gifts will be for harvest. That is on the 11th. And we will have our 6.15 and 8.15 a.m. harvest services. Then in the evening, on Harvest Sunday, uh, it is also the last Sunday after the Epiphany. We invite you to return. At 6 o'clock, we'll have solemn even song and tedium as we round out our harvest celebrations and we prepare for the journey into the wilderness of Lent. I think that is all by way of notices. Celestine, have I missed anything? Jean, have I missed anything? No, I think that is all. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Going once. Going twice, yes, okay. So we have Nurse Nanton, we have Teacher Stella, we have Dana. Okay. Oh my. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, as we give you thanks and praise for this day, we thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us, and very especially life upon your servants, our sisters at this time. You have brought them through the past year. Your grace has sustained, strengthened, and guided them. And their presence is a testimony of the blessings that you have poured upon them. May they have a wonderful time, celebrate with family and friends and those who are near and dear to them. We pray that in the years to come, they may be kept under the shadow and pinion of your wings. Bless and prosper their lives according to your riches in glory. And until you come or call them home, we pray that they serve you faithfully all their days. These mercies and more we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Crescendo. Day to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. May the Lord bless you. Lord, may the Lord, may the Lord bless you. <laughs> and now our offertory hymn from the uh, provincial hymnal number 309, 309, 
our offertory hymn, the provincial hymn. Now. Twenty-six, page one to six. We shall use prayer B, prayer B, as we present ourselves and our gifts. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us: the bread, the wine, and the money. With them, we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because in coming to dwell among us as man, he revealed the radiance of his glory and brought us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We invite you to sit or kneel, Eucharistic Prayer C, page 137. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to Almighty God, and that this sacrifice offered at my hands may be for the praise and glory of His holy name and for the benefit of His holy church. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, and out of death into life. On the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Whenever you eat it, you do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he blessed it. He gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. With our palms open and face in heavenward, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christian friends, we break the bread to share in the body of Christ. The second option for the Agnes Day, the middle of page 147. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. What shall we give to the Lord in return for all the blessings he has given unto us? Let us now lift up the cup of salvation as we call upon the name of the Lord, saying, Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy thou shouldst come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. During the administration of the Blessed Sacrament, we will sing from the provincial hymnal, 617, 617, and if needed, 568. The hymnal, 617.
for Jesus at thine altar, thou wilt give us sweet content. In the bell and sacrament, long for Jesus on still and know that God is God so that he may be exalted in his world may be exalted in our lives page 148 the middle of the page we find the second prayer of thanksgiving the Lord be with you we pray together eternal God and heavenly father for feeding us, body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We invite our children and young people to stand at this time for their hymn, Children and Young People, from the Mission Praise number 809. Mission Praise 809. Children and Young People. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. The name of the Lord is strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord, most high. Glory to the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord, glory to the name of the Lord, most high. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are saved. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. 
and eternal God, following the example of your son, Jesus Christ, who took children in his arms and blessed them, we bring our children before you, our young people, not only within the walls of this church, of this parish, but indeed this land. We pray your grace and heavenly benediction upon them. Grant them that spirit of understanding, that spirit of discernment, that amidst the temptations and the challenges which surround them and they encounter each day, they would always choose to walk with you as Lord and Savior of their life. We pray that a hedge, a fence will be built around them to protect them in their going out and their coming in as they kept under the shadow and pony of your wings. We pray a blessing upon their parents and guardians that they may be examples who will teach them well and nurture them in the fear of your holy name. These mercies and more we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. May Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, remembering those whom you will love and care for now and forevermore. Amen. And so a recessional hymn from the Mission Praise number 101. Mission Praise 101. praise of Jesus. Sing his love with hearts of flame. Sing his wondrous birth of Mary. When to save the world he came. Tell the life he lived for others. Mighty this proclaim for Jesus Christ is King. Praise and glory be to Jesus. Praise and glory be to Jesus, praise and glory be to Jesus, for Jesus Christ is King.
and glory be to Jesus, for Jesus Christ is King. To Jesus be the glory, the dominion and the praise. He is Lord of all creation, He is guide of all the ways. And the world shall be his empire in the fullness of the days, for Jesus Christ is King. Praise and glory, praise and glory be to Jesus, praise and glory, glory be to Jesus, praise and glory, Jesus. For Jesus Christ is King. The Lord be with you. Let us now go in peace to love each other and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Have a wonderful day today.